priority of the computer. So I'm not going to go over all these, but obviously Hashcat supports a ton of algorithms. So these are all the different types of passwords that Hashcat can crack. Which equates to thousands of applications. So, you know, PHP, VB, all sorts of stuff. Now I've heard of SHA-256 and SHA-512. What, is one of those equivalent to SHA-512? Yes, and I'm not sure. It has to do with the encoding. So... If I see a dollar sign six in a like a Unix password hash, that, that which one would I use? That is the SHA one pass sol. Okay. And so Hashcat supports Linux hashes, but um, OCL Hashcat does not yet. Yeah, just jump over. <laughs> anyway, so you gotta have some statistics. Everybody loves statistics. So I don't know if anybody can see this, but like just real quick, um, we compare this against the Password Pro software. As you can see, Passwords Pro is only single threaded and it's not multi threaded. So it compares with Hashcat running on one thread. And this is on a Windows 7 64 bit, in case anyone can't see, Core 2 Quad Q66. And uh, so Hashcat running on four threads obviously is four times faster. So Passwords Pro does 7.27 million keys per second, and this is only on two hashes. And then Hashcat does 33.1 million keys per second, which is significantly faster. And then the real, um, the real uh, features of Hashcat shine, once you jump over to 500,000 hashes, you can see that Passwords Pro drops all the way down to less than a million keys per second, while Hashcat only loses three million keys per second. So that's pretty significant. And uh, I'm not going to go over all of these, but it's basically the same, um, the same all across the board. It's compared against John the Ripper. And uh, anyway, so the main attacks of Hashcat, like I said, I can't go over all of these, but I, I just want to touch on them basically. The main attacks that Hashcat can do is a straight word list. Um, it can do combinations of words, and the way that that works is, uh, and, and it'll make more sense when you see it on paper, but the way that it works is Hashcat has what's called a left mask and a right mask, and so you can add a dictionary to the left mask, and you can add another dictionary to the right mask, and it will try each one and combine them together and you can append digits or anything you want to the end, or you can just do a dictionary on the left mask and digits on, or letters or whatever on the right mask. And uh, I'll try to make that more sense later. But So then there's the toggle case attack. What that does is it toggles the case of every single word in your dictionary or every single word in the brute force. Um, permutation, obviously, um, does lead speak, that kind of stuff. and. Uh, and then there's the obviously brute force. Um, brute force on Hashcat isn't totally effective since it's CPU based, but as you'll see in a minute, brute force on OCL Hashcat mm -hmm. is um, extremely effective. Um, I ask you a question. Is that permutation, is that like saying hybrid in the, in the other tools? No. A hybrid attack basically means that you take a dictionary and you append digits or letters or whatever you want to the end of it. So permutation does uh, character replace, like changes E's to 3's or, or all capitals to uh, lowercase or anything like that. Like, and, and basically it's whatever Adam coded in there. I, I haven't found anything that it doesn't do yet. I mean, it basically um, permutates every word into 50 or 60 different iterations. So you also have to be careful with some of these rules because they can... Um, they can uh, get out of hand quickly. You know what I mean? If you have a couple million words in your dictionary and you amplify every word 50 times, um, it, it can start to take a long time. So that's where Hashcat really comes in. That was kind of the old way to do it. You know what I mean? Was to let John run with rules and, and mangling and all that kind of stuff for days and days and days. And then came distributed, which made it a little bit faster. But what Hashcat tries to do is do a more um, targeted attack. All right, so I'm going to show. So uh, Hashcat runs from the CLI. And so there's the binaries, just like uh, 
just like any other CLI tool. But what I'm going to show just for a Hashcat is the um, GUI, just since we don't have a lot of time. And, I, and actually, the best part about the GUI is that at the bottom of it, it actually gives you the command line command and uh, gives you an option to copy and paste it, which I really like. See down here at the bottom where I already have a... Anyway, so there's the command line that it offers. So, And they do that because it's a little bit complicated at first. It has a steep learning curve. And so using the GUI and then looking down here and seeing what the deal is, um, you can kind of... Uh, you can kind of uh, get a gist for how to use it on the command line. So what I'm going to do here is I have a hash file. Um, this is the RockU text list. Um, it was a big list of leaked passwords from a bunch of places that came out a couple of months ago. And what I've done is I've just rehashed it for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, Does that come with the tool or do you need to download it? Uh, I'll give you the link to download it. I think it's uh, in just a little while. I got some word lists. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Ron on, has that. Yeah, it's also. on Skull Security's site. Uh, but I have the links for all of that at the end for all these word lists that I use. Um, so, like I said, I don't want to do a brute force attack. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the. Uh, I forgot which one I'm supposed to do first. Sorry. Oh, the rules. All right, so I'm going to do a rules. So, I would do like combination words. And then what it's going to do is it's going to ask me about rules. Obviously, the hash type is over here. It's uh, MD5 just for the purposes of this. Um, this rule right here, if you go into the rules folder, there's some rules that um, these two that say dead one uh, don't come with Hashcat, but they are available on the site. Um, but these other rules are the rules that come with it by default. As you can see, there's a lead speak rule. This is the Passwords Pro rule. So basically, they just took their rule from Password Pro and added it here. Um, the Combinator rule, which combines words together. Uh, anyway, it's similar to the way the rules work in John. So if you're familiar with that, you'll know how to do this. And, or this is the option to generate random rules. As you can see, you can do 10, 1,000, 100,000, 1 million. Like I said, these rules can get really out of hand. So, you, you know either want to um, experiment with small rules first and uh, see what happens, or unless you have this on a dedicated box where it can run for a long time. So let's see what happens. Give me crackers is the uh, <laughs> output. So and then, so you can see that it just added all the stuff. And then you can always hit enter for the status. And you can see that, and it will tell you how many it's recovered so far. We haven't recovered any yet, but there we've recovered four already. And as you can see, the speed just on my little laptop right here is 11.03 million words per second, which is pretty good for a laptop. We're, we've already beat Kane on a desktop computer, which is where I took that screenshot. Mm. Six. And obviously, I mean, like, I've only let this run five seconds. I already have six passwords. But obviously, if I let this run all day, I would probably be able to get most of the passwords. There's 11. See, I mean, I'm getting a few passwords every second. And um, how many hashes are in the file? 65,000. Oh. Or 650,000 yeah, hashes in the file. Now, so what, what is it outputting them to? It, I, I specified an output file, which is oh, right okay. here, right. two dot text. If you don't specify one, it just puts it right up to the yeah, console. It prints right? it to the screen, correct, if you don't okay. specify one. Yeah, there's a, actually a bug in Hashcat GUI with Windows 7 right now. Uh, this other kid developed the GUI, and that monitor, you can usually monitor the out file so you can see the hashes in real time as they come out, but it doesn't work right now. So there's what I've cracked so far. So see, it puts it in a really nice file with hash and then password. Anyway, so you can see there's quite a few already. You could just take source files are like common delimited space on Sorry? Your source files is like common delimited file. My source file for the passwords? Right, yeah. No, it's just hash. And that's just, it. Just hash. Year. And now if there's salts, you would have to put you hash salts. the dictionary salt. list itself? Well, no, just put it oh, hash right now. It's like one if I could go and grab a field out of a, of a database that has hashes in it, how would I 
just you would want to break it down to where it's just the password hash, for instance. Right. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So it doesn't right. have the username and the home directory, you know, right. whatever it may be. Just hash. Okay. One per line. Or hash salt. Okay. Yeah, so one per yeah line. okay, right. One I'll per line. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, I'll just show you like my file I'm using right here just so everyone so can see. Simple things that defeat. There's all I've been put into it, the straight MD5 hashes. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, so I'm just so I'm going to stop that attack, and then I'm just going to show one other one. Um, so, and and in reality, you could go through each of these one at a time and uh, keep cracking on the exact same list, and it will actually um, there's a setting to remove. I'm not sure where it is exactly, but there's a setting to remove the hash from the hash file after it's been cracked to keep them in order. So you would say remove, and then it so then your list of hashes would go down, and so the computational time to go over the list would decrease right. as you cracked more. But it, does it know by default if it's already cracked the hash not to keep running the same thing on that hash again? That's what I'm saying. It removes oh, the hash from the file totally. Oh, so that what, you, no what was that there. option set? That's only. Well, in Linux, it's dash dash remove. I'm not a Windows guru. Uh, it's got to be around here somewhere. I'll have to get back to you on that. Okay. But on the Linux version, it's just dash dash remove on the command line. But otherwise, it will try to crack the hash again and again, even once it did. It's possible OCL hashcat is the only one that does that. But I'm I'm I, I'm not. I have to get back to you on that. Okay. But I'm pretty sure that it, it works. I just don't know. So just to show one more um, attack, this is going to be similar. And so you can set the password length that you want it to permutate. The reason that you would do this is so that the length of the permutation doesn't get out of hand. You know what I mean? Because cracking six, seven, and eight character passwords is a lot easier than cracking 14 character passwords. So you don't want to waste all your time permutating out that high. But we'll set it at eight, which is good for... And, and once again, a lot of this depends on are you just quickly trying to grab a few hashes or do you have a big giant list you want to set for to run a long time at home, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the guys at, there's another website called hashkiller.com, which is run by one of the Hashcat guys, and uh, they compete. They, uh, every day, they post the list of uncracked MD5s, and uh, people download the list and try to crack as many as they can and then upload them, and then basically on your form, Next to your name, it uh, lists the number of hashes that you've cracked. It's just kind of a status symbol. But it's uh, a lot of fun to practice cracking passwords because the, the theories are the same. It's just the hashes that are different. So if you get good at MD5s, you can create patterns that will crack NTLMs and so on and so forth. So if you don't have a job or a life, <laughs> you can uh, get in the top 1,000 people on Hashkiller. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so where are you guys on that list? I've never cracked one person. I've, I've honestly only got a few thousand because I have a job and a life. That could be great. <laughs> 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 <It's okay. laughs> Tough crowd. All right, so as you can see, what happened here was it added the hashes that have already been recovered, Adrian, to the memory so that it's not going to try to crack those hashes again. Okay. So, and you can just press enter for status. See how now I've recovered 2,839. I'm running at 13.59 million per second, which is obviously probably going to get faster. <laughs> the reason that this slowed down was because of the permutation attack slows everything down because it's got it's not doing straight words with something appended to the end. It's basically using a whole lot more memory. 5039 53022 and this is and this is not some password list that I set up this is a leaked password list from a well-known database that I actually cut it down to 650,000 there's actually like a, a couple hundred million passwords in there and so that it was it was recent enough that these are all real life common passwords and Just change my Gmail account password for your saying maybe <laughs> <laughs> if it's your name with the date on the end I would no. anyway so 
that's all I'm going to do on that. As you can see, 74,000. So I'm killing it. If I let this run all day, I would probably crack over half these hashes, which cracking half of uh, 600,000.